What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I received a package from Monster Joysticks and I'm really excited to put this thing together. I've been eyeballing them for a little while. This is the Deluxe Arcade Controller Kit for a Raspberry Pi by Monster Joysticks. Now I've seen a lot of these. I put a lot of these together, you know, piecing them together online. But I gotta say, this is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. There's a few things that stand out with this joystick. First up, it does come with full Sanwa buttons. It also comes with a Sanwa joystick and a GPIO interface for the buttons and joystick. Now, a lot of these do use USB encoders and they're good, they do work, but there's a little bit of lag here and there. Some people notice it, some people don't. With the setup this unit uses, all the buttons and joysticks are piped in through the GPIO on your Raspberry Pi, which pretty much alleviates any lag. This also comes with full color instructions. You can also go to their website and find them. I wasn't gonna make a build video, but I figured I'll go ahead and do it. The instructions are so easy to follow, anybody can build one of these. There's a few other things you'll need before you get started. It doesn't come with a Raspberry Pi. I suggest picking up a Raspberry Pi 3. You'll need an SD card, an HDMI cable, and a power adapter for the Pi. You'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver and possibly some needle nose pliers. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this unboxed and built. So Monster Joysticks does offer two versions, a wood version and this version here. This is actually not acrylic, it's made out of polystyrene, so it's not going to crack as easy. It does come covered with this protective film on it, so you'll need to peel all this off, and it can be a pain. But as you can see, the polystyrene is black. I am a sucker for wood grain, so what he did was send me the case of their wood version also. Not a full kit, just the case, but I think this looks really good. It will take a little bit of finishing. You'll need to lightly sand it, possibly put a clear coat on it, or even stain it. But in this video, I'm gonna be putting together their plastic kit, because I think a lot of people are gonna to wanna to get this over the wood. I did mention it comes with Sanwa parts. Now this is genuine Sanwa. It's not a clone or a copy. This comes straight out of the Sanwa factory. Feels great. These are my favorite joysticks. Some people like Hap, some people like Samitsu. I love Sanwa. These are my go-to, I have a ton of them. Also, real Sanwa silent buttons. So we get an assortment of colors and I think it goes really good with the black polystyrene. We also have the wiring harness, all the mounting hardware we'll need, and the custom GPIO joystick and button encoder. So this slaps right on your Pi's GPIO pins, alleviates any lag you would have from using a USB encoder. This harness will plug right in and you're ready to go. You will need to install the SNES dev driver. It's located right in the RetroPie menu under drivers. Super easy to install, we'll go over that. But one of the best things about this is the instruction manual. Follow along, every step is there. You'll have this thing put together in no time. Like I mentioned, there's a few things you'll need to complete this kit, like a Raspberry Pi. I suggest using the Pi 3. You'll need an SD card, an HDMI cable, and a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. I also suggest installing a heat sink. This is just a little copper plate with an aluminum heat sink on top of it. You can get them real cheap on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, one thing I wanted to add to this kit was an eight-way gate for the Sanwa stick. So it comes with a four-way gate. And by gate, I mean restrictor. Some people call them gates, some people call them restrictors. I just like the way the eight-way feels. It's an octagon. This is made by Sanwa also, it'll clip right on. Now you can always get by with the four way, it's really a matter of preference. These are about four to five dollars on Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna get one of these. So the very first thing you really wanna do is peel this protective coating off. It is a little bit of a pain, it does take a while. It's actually easier than some of the other things that I've messed around with. It seems to come off a lot easier than it does on acrylic. First thing I'm going to do is attach the Pi to the base of the case. Now there is a shiny side and a dull side. Shiny side will be on the outside of the case. The Pi will mount right here. All the mounting hardware comes included. You will have access to the SD card through this slot here. Comes with these little plastic screws. We're going to run them up from the bottom. We need to put one plastic nut to hold the screw in place. This will also raise the Pi by a little tiny bit just to keep it off the plastic. I'll go ahead and mount all four screws. Now that we have the screws and nuts in place, we're just gonna mount the Raspberry Pi right on top. We'll use another set of plastic nuts to hold it down. In this video, I'm just putting them as tight as I can with my fingers, but 
I definitely suggest getting a pair of needle nose pliers and just giving a little extra. You don't want to go too hard with it. It's not going to go anywhere. Now I have the Raspberry Pi 3 mounted and tightened down. It's time to get the buttons inserted into the top plate and the sides. These buttons will lock in when you place them inside of here. You're just going to push them down, wait for it to click. I'll show you with this one here. Now they won't be going anywhere. So we just want to finish up inserting all the buttons. There's a total of nine buttons here. We got six on the top and three on the sides. With all of my buttons in place, it's time to mount the joystick. Really simple to mount the joystick. We're just going to grab the rest of the screws here. Now this little baggie contains all the screws we need to mount the joystick and put the case together. Make sure the connector on the joystick is facing towards the buttons. I'll grab the panel, insert the joystick from the bottom. Now again, I will be doing these finger tight. I suggest tightening them up a little more than I am in this video. You can literally assemble one of these in five minutes. Just follow the instructions he gives you with the kit and you shouldn't have any trouble at all. Now just grab a bolt and put it in through the top. I did two bolts at one time. Just held them in place with one finger. So I'll put one bolt here, one bolt here. I'll hold them, turn the whole unit over, and we can slide the nuts on. Now I don't want to tighten these all the way up just yet. I want to get all four bolts in first. You don't need to torque these down too much. You don't want to risk breaking anything, but you do want them snug because when you're moving around playing a fighting game, the joystick will have the most pressure on it. So there is a chance that these bolts could come loose. All you'd have to do is pull one of the sides off and put them back on, but you don't want that to happen, so make sure they're snug. While I'm here, I'll just throw the ball on, and then we want to tighten all the bolts up. Make sure the stick is centered where you like it, grab a screwdriver, and tighten them down. Now that I have everything tightened down, I want to replace my gate. Now this is not necessary at all. The Sanwa 4-Way works great. It still has eight ways of movement. It just feels different to have this octagonal gate on here. The old one will just pop right off. There's four little clips here. You make sure you put your finger under it. Get two of them off. Pop it up. Grab your other one. Make sure it's in the correct orientation. Snap it down. Some people might not like the way the eight way feels. A lot of people just prefer the stock Sanwa. This is another option for you. I play a lot of fighting games and I just love the way the eight way feels. We got everything in place. Now it's time to wire the buttons up. The wires are color coded for the buttons, except for the blue. The blue actually goes to the purple on the side. Orange will go to orange, pink will go to pink. And for the top, there is another blue button. We're gonna find that wire here. It is a striped blue wire, so it's blue and black. It'll go to the top blue button. As for the encoder, we're just going to plug it right in. It only goes one way. This will go on top of the pie. Now it's time to worry about the grounds. It is daisy chained, so you want to make sure the first one that's closest to the encoder has a little bit of slack to get to one of the side buttons. Arcade buttons are pretty much momentary switches. It does not matter which side the ground goes on or which side the hot goes on. It's not really sending voltage to any of these buttons themselves. All they really do is bridge a gap in the connection when you press the button. So ground or the so-called positive can go on either side. Just make sure you're lining the colors up correctly with the buttons. And even then it really doesn't matter because when we configure this in RetroPie, we can set the buttons up any way we want. The last three grounds on the chain here will go to the side buttons. But while we're here, let's go ahead and plug in the joystick. There's a dedicated joystick connector here. It's going to plug right into the Sanwa style connector on the side. There is a little lock on the connector, so make sure you have it locked in place. And all that's left here is to match the corresponding colored wire with the correct colored button. And there we have it. We have the top six buttons wired up plus the joystick. Time to start putting this thing together so we can reach these other buttons with the wires. There isn't any specific order these need to go in. 
but they do need to go on the correct sides. As you can see here, this has a gap. This will allow us to access our Raspberry Pi's ethernet and four USB ports. This can be a little tricky putting the nuts in, but what I did was magnetize a little screwdriver so I can hold it in place. We're gonna run the screw up and we have the nut on there now. So what this is going to do is just pull everything together. You don't want to tighten it down all the way yet. Just make sure it's a little snug. You want a little bit of play so we can get the other sides on. So I definitely recommend getting some sort of magnet or magnetize a screwdriver of some sort. It just makes life so much easier to put these on. It'll hold it right there and we can place them in the little slot. Now that we have at least three sides on, it's time to plug in the GPIO adapter to the Raspberry Pi. So it'll go a little something like this. I'm going to grab the base plate. I'll try my hardest to show you guys this. It's a lot simpler than it looks. I'm trying to get this in frame with the camera. We'll just plug it right in. And we can now attach the bottom and the back side of the joystick. Here it is, fully assembled. I think it looks really good, especially with these colored buttons. On the front, we have one button. Now, when setting these up, it's really personal preference on what button does what. On the side, we do have access to our Ethernet and four USB ports. Moving around back, HDMI, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and our power input. So in order for this joystick to be recognized by RetroPie, we do need to install the SNES dev driver. Luckily, it's already located in the RetroPie setup. So let's move over there now and get it installed. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to install the SNES dev driver so we can get this joystick up and running. First thing you need to do is make sure you're connected online. You will either have another controller connected or a keyboard. Go to the RetroPie menu. From here, we're gonna to go to RetroPie setup. Press enter. Now that we're in the RetroPie setup, we're going to scroll down to Manage Packages. From this menu, we'll find Manage Driver Packages. Now we need to find SNES Dev. Press OK. And we're going to install this from Source. You need to be online for this to work. Give it a little time to finish downloading and installing. It could take a minute or so to finish up. Now that it's finished installing, we're going to scroll to Configuration and Options, press OK. From here, we want to choose option number two, SNES Dev Keyboard Mapping Polling Only Pads. When that's finished, press OK. We need one more step here, Configuration and Options. Scroll down to Switch to Adapter Version 1.x, press OK. Now we can back up, perform a reboot, and set our arcade stick up. I'm going to move over to my workbench and show you how this thing performs in a few games. Now that we have the unit assembled and all the drivers installed, we do need to set the joystick up. So I have a keyboard connected. I'm just going to press start. You can use the controller or keyboard. Scroll down to configure input. Yes. There's two game pads detected. My keyboard that's already plugged in and the joystick itself. I'm just going to hold a button here. For my D-pad, up, down, left, right. Start's going to be over on my right-hand side. Select's going to be in the front. So start, select. Because I'm going to play a lot of arcade games with this, and this is going to be my insert coin button. When setting up any joystick in RetroPie, there's no specific way to do it. So you might want to experiment a little bit, whatever feels good to you. I'm just going to keep skipping these until I get to my hotkey. I'm going to set my hotkey to my left side button. Now we're ready to start playing. So I got a lot of great arcade stuff installed, but I do want to switch my theme out. I was using the stock carbon theme, but I'm going to go with Dwayne Hurst Magazine Madness because I got a lot of collection set up that I like to use, like CPS1, CPS2, Konami, and things like that. It's one of my favorite themes, and you can download it directly on RetroPie. Just go to the ES Themes menu and look for Magazine Madness. I'm going to find a few games to test out. I love Street Fighter, so I'm going to go with Super Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, the CPS 3 game. I'll go ahead and insert some coins using my front button, press start, and we can start playing. 
I'll tell you right now that this Sanwa does make a big difference. Um, the actions are a lot smoother. If you've ever messed around with those 10 or $20 joysticks on eBay and Amazon, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's hard to pull off moves in Street Fighter games. With the Sanwa, it's pretty much dead on every time. Moving over to another one of my favorite arcade games, The Simpsons. Now this is the two-player version, so I can select my character. When I think of a joystick like this or an arcade stick, I don't want to play SNES or NES with it. You can, and it works great for that, but I wanted to test out some arcade games, so that's what I'm doing in this video. And the final game I'm going to be testing is a Neo Geo game, Metal Slug 3. So the buttons are a little weird here, the way I set them up. So it's really up to you how you set your buttons up. Like I mentioned, you might need to experiment with it. As you can see, shoot and jump are in the right place for me, but my grenade button is my blue button. So I do have to reach up to press that. It's not a big deal. You can get used to it, but you might want to mess around with it and set it up in different ways. So overall, I think this is a really nice setup. The fact that it comes with the Sanwa buttons and stick is a big plus, but one of the things I really like about this is that GPIO adapter. Virtually zero lag with that. The kit itself is $135 minus the Raspberry Pi. He also sells the GPIO hat on the website in case you want to throw this inside of a shoe box and buy your own buttons. You can always do that. But for people who don't have access to laser cutters or even wood cutting tools, this is a great option. Easy to put together, the instructions are spot on, and it works great. All you need is your Raspberry Pi, SD card, HDMI, and a power adapter. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave links in the description to Monster Joysticks. I'll also leave links to Amazon where you can buy a Raspberry Pi and that eight-way gate I showed you from Sanwa. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe, and like always, thanks for watching.